Hi everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show and welcome back for part two of our polka dot granny square baby blanket using Pound of Love by Lion Brand. If you're looking for part one in which we make our six inch polka dot granny squares, you'll find that tutorial linked below as well as some additional reference tutorials on different methods for joining your squares. Today I'm going to be joining my squares together and adding a border. I'm using the mattress or ladder stitch to join my squares together. It's an invisible sewing stitch which is really handy when your squares are different colors like mine are, but you can use whatever method you like and like I said we've got some resources for you there down in the comment section. Uh, just above it actually in the description box and also the pinned comment at the top. Many of you have asked about the pattern for today's project and we're happy to report that the polka dot granny square baby blanket pattern is now available in our Etsy shop. It includes the six inch square pattern instructions along with joining and the border. Thank you so much to everybody who has popped into our shop and picked up a pattern. It is one of the best ways you can help support us here at the Jada and Stitches show. We are going to use a two color version of one of my favorite stitch patterns today for the border, the brick stitch. The brick stitch makes a really pretty border. It's fast, it's really easy, and it will work on a blanket using any number of these polka dot granny squares. So whether you made a blanket of 12 squares like me, or maybe even 60 squares, that brick stitch border will work from corner to corner, from corner to corner, no extra math required, doesn't matter how many squares you're using. So I used antique white and pastel pink for my squares. I'm going to continue with those colors as I join them all together and add the border. So let's grab our hooks, grab our pounds of love. We will head on over to the craft table and we will stitch our squares into a blanket together. our big polka dot blanket I'm using 12 granny squares today so six with a white center pink background six with a pink center and a white background six of each that's 12 to untotal and for the border I'm going to need around 50 yards now if you were going to make a 4 by 5 or a 20 square blanket you need around 60 yards for the border I'm using Pound of Love by Lion Brand. This is a size four, medium weight, 100% acrylic yarn. There is so much, over a thousand yards per ball. You can definitely get a couple of baby blankets or a baby blanket, a matching sweater, booties, hats, the entire set out of just two pounds of love. I'm using a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a nine in the US. And it's the same hook that I used to make my squares. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Once you have your squares, you want to lay them out in the order that you want to see your blanket. I'm going to put a little insert photograph here, Mr. and Stitches will do that for me, of the actual layout of my blanket. It's three by four or th row, four rows of three squares each. I'm going to start by seaming together the individual squares in each row. And then once I have the rows together, I will seam them together row to row to row. So I've got four rows of three squares each to seam together. I'm going to be using the ladder stitch to join my squares. We've got a link to that tutorial on how to join using the ladder stitch down below. I'm going to show you briefly, but of course you could also whip stitch your squares together, which you might like to do if all of your square backgrounds are the same color. I'm using mattress stitch because I'm using different colored squares um, right next to each other. You could also single crochet or slip stitch your squares together. And we've got a link to a tutorial on how to do that down below as well. If you prefer to crochet your squares together as opposed to sewing them. For the mattress or ladder stitch, I've cut a length of yarn. I've thread up my yarn needle. I've got the first two squares in the first row of my blanket. I'm just going to find the corner stitch. So I've got two corner stitches. I'm going to find the middle one or the one that's closest to, to the edge that I'm going to be sewing on. And I'm just going to anchor my yarn by knotting it to that corner stitch. So I'm going to knot it twice just so I know it doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to weave that little tail in later and then this is the row I'll be, or I should say the edge of the square that I'll be sewing up. So I'm just going to start by placing my needle down through one and up through the next stitch. So that's down through one, up through the next. I'm going to pull my yarn, get my little tail out of the way. And then in the corresponding square, 
I'm going to find those two stitches that would sit opposite them and I'm going to go down through the first stitch and up through the second stitch. So down and up. And I'm not going to pull too tightly right off the bat. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing that all the way across. I'm going to get what look like little ladder rungs. So if I'm going to hold this now sideways so you can see both of those rows together, I want to make sure that my stitches are aligned. And then this is the stitch that I came up and out of. I'm going to come back to this first side down through the stitch that my last that I came out of the last time. So I go down through the one I came up through. So down up and then down up. You're using each stitch twice. Hop across. I came out through this stitch so I'm going to go down and then up through the next one. Don't pull too tightly. You're going to do this a couple times. Try not to split your yarn. And you can see it, you've got what look like ladder rungs, rungs in a ladder, kind of happening between the two. After you do that a few stitches, or so every three or four stitches, just hold the ends of your granny squares, pull tight, and that stitching disappears. And this is why I'm using the mattress stitch or the ladder stitch, it has two names, because as I sew it together, that joining yarn is going to completely disappear. You're not going to see it. You're only going to see the two edges of the, the granny squares sort of butting up against each other, but the joining yarn is invisible. So you can use either color. That's a great stitch, a join stitch to use when you're putting together squares that are different colors. I'm going to do all of the, all of the squares in each row. So three squares, three squares, three squares, three squares. Then I will join all of my rows together and then I'll be putting on the border when I'm finished. Once you've stitched the entire seam of a couple of squares or of a row, I like to come right out the top of the color or the square that I'm not using the color of, then bring that join yarn down through the neighboring stitch of the square that matches it. And then on the back, I'm just going to work a tiny little knot and weave the tail in a couple times, just so it doesn't want to go anywhere on me. So there's my knot. Then I'm just going to weave that tail in like I would if I had finished a regular granny square. So I'm going to find some stitches, weave it down, back and forth a couple times, then I'll weave in the little tail at the other end, and then I'll move on to the next seam. I have seamed together all four rows, three squares each per row, and the entire blanket has now been put together. So I'm all ready to add my border. That mattress or ladder stitch is so neat and tidy that you can't even tell what color I stitch them all together with, so it looks nice and neat and tidy on the front and the back. All 12 of my squares are attached, so let's add a border. The border is done uh, by alternating row colors. So you could technically do the entire border in a single color if you wanted to, but I'm going to alternate. So I'm going to do a row of white, a row of pink, and a row of white. We're using the brick stitch for the pattern uh, for the border, which is a skinny row of single crochet and some chains, a thicker row of double crochet, and then a skinny row again. Uh, and you can do as many rows of the brick stitch if, um, that you want if you want a thicker border. I'm only going to be doing three rows today. So I'm going to start with white. You can use whatever color you want. And you want to start in the top corner. Top right hand corner if you're right handed. Top left hand corner if you're left handed. You're looking for the corner space in that top square. We're going to join with a single crochet in the chain two corner space. And here we go. Chain two. Skip the first two stitches, single crochet into the next stitch. And I'm going to weave in my little tail at the end. 
chain two, skip two stitches, single crochet into the next stitch, chain two, skip two stitches, single crochet into the next stitch. This is a very straightforward little pattern, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch, chain two, skip two, and that brings you up to the little corner space of the square. You're going to single crochet right into that. Chain two, single crochet into the corner space of the next square and continue. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. And that will work out all the way across. I'll catch up with you at the next blanket corner. Across each side you're going to have single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch, and when you get to the seam between squares, single crochet into the corner space, chain two, skip the seam, single crochet into the next corner of the second square or the square next to that one, and continue. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. When you get up to the corner you're going to single crochet into that last stitch, chain two, skip two, that brings you to the corner, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet into the same space. That is for a corner of the actual blanket. So when you get up to the corner, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that space, and then continue. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next space, or I should say stitch. Single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch, when you get to the space or the seam between squares, it'll be the same thing. You'll skip two, single crochet into the corner, chain two, skip the seam, single crochet into the corner, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. It'll work out all the way around. When you get to the actual corner of the blanket, remember, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, all into that same corner space. And I will see you back at the beginning. When you get back up to the beginning, single crochet, chain two, skip the last two, that brings you up to the same corner space you started in. Single crochet, chain two, and join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet, and fasten off if you're changing colors. If you're not changing colors, then just hang tight. I'm going to weave my tails in later. If you're not changing colors, you're just going to slip stitch, uh, I should say you're going to chain three where you are, and then work, that chain three will count as a double crochet, you'll work two double crochet into the space, double crochet into the single crochet, two double crochet into the space, etc. For the rest of us who are changing colors, we're actually going to join our yarn in the corner space of the blanket. So grab your second color, we're going to make a slip knot. We're going to join with a slip stitch in that chain two corner space. And I think I might work over my short tails here. We're going to chain three. This counts as a double crochet. We're going to double crochet once more into that corner space. And then where people not changing colors just chained three. We're going to double crochet into that first stitch because that's the first stitch. There we go. And then it's the same. Two double crochet into the chain two space. And when you get to a single crochet from the previous row, you work a double crochet into that. So it's just double crochets in this row. For those of you who didn't change color, don't worry about this corner. You can do it when you get all the way back around. It is two double crochet in each chain two space and a double crochet in each of the single crochets from the previous row. So your little border, if you see a stitch, you, you double crochet into it. If you see a chain two space, you work two double crochet. So double crochet, two double crochet, double crochet, two double crochet 
all the way across. I'll catch up with you at the next corner. When you reach a corner, work a double crochet into that single crochet from the previous row's corner. Then you've got that little chain two space. In the chain two space, we're going to work two double crochet, chain two, and two double crochet all into the same corner space. So two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet into the corner space. Looks like that, nice and neat and tidy. And then you're just back to the same old pattern. So don't miss that first stitch before you leave. Double crochet into that, then two double crochet into the chain two space. Double crochet into the next stitch, two double crochet into the next space, and so on. When you get to the corner, any of the remaining corners, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in the corner and that just turns the corner neatly. Nice little 90 degree corner there. And the rest of it is the same. Double crochets all around. I'll catch back up with you at the beginning. When you get back to the beginning, work a double crochet into that last stitch. And for those of us who changed colors, we're going to work two double crochet into that corner space, the same one we joined in chain two and then join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain two that began the entire row. Now if you didn't change colors and your chain three, or I should say the chain three that began the row, if your chain three is over here you would work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet and then join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. It'll be right there. So either way everybody's going to have the same looking border. Now if you're changing colors you're going to fasten off and if you're not changing colors, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and then single crochet, chain one single crochet in this stitch over here. Then chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch and so on. You wanna make sure you've got these two stitches skipped. So you're starting here. If you're changing color like me, we're gonna start in the chain two corner again. So you can grab your other color. I'm gonna make a slip knot. Look at me and my messy little slip knots. Slip knot on the hook. There we go. Join with a slip stitch. Actually, we're going to join with a single crochet. There we go. We're back to single crochet. Join with a single crochet in that chain two space. And I'm going to worry about working over top of my short tails, or I should say weaving them in later. So we're in the chain two space. We're going to chain two skip the first two stitches. Remember if you didn't change color you you joined here, you slip stitched there and you single crocheted here. We're skipping these two and we're going to single crochet into the next stitch and then it's the same thing. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. When you get to the corners, so let me see here, oh I missed the actual stitch, let's not do that. There we go. Single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. When you get to the corner, remember for this row, all the way over here, it's single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the corner stitch, then chain two, skip the next two stitches, single crochet into the third, and you continue that all the way around. So this is what I sort of consider the quick and fast row, just because you're single crocheting and chaining, skipping a bunch of stitches, nice and quick, and we're finishing the border with this little mortar row. Now, if you wanted to keep going, of course you could. You can add as many of these rows as you want. It's just a repeat. Um, every double crochet row is two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in the corner, and then a double crochet in every stitch, two double crochet in every chain two space. And every little mortar row is just single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch, chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch, stitch, etc. And corners are single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So that is the easiness of this pattern. I'm just going to zip around my blanket, finish off my third row of the border, and I'll see you back at the beginning.
When you get back to the beginning, the last thing you're going to do, single crochet, skip two, single crochet into that chain two space where you started, chain two, and join with slip stitch to the top of the single crochet. If you start it over here, you're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, and then join with your slip stitch to the first single crochet over here. So either way, you're skipping those two stitches from the row previous. Okay, we can all fasten off. Take a moment to weave in our tails. And you might want to consider blocking your blanket. Um, sometimes, if you're going to give this as a gift, I highly recommend it. Maybe even give it a light wash. We have a light wash and block um, tutorial that I recommend if you're giving away this baby blanket as a gift or even if you're going to donate it or something. Um, and also, if you are giving it as a gift, I highly recommend you include wash and care instructions with it because that is helpful to whomever gets the blanket so they know how to take care of it since you put so much hard work and effort into it. And there you go, one adorable finished blanket. The polka dots would look cute in any combination of colors. And once again, we used Pound of Love by Lion Brand. If you want to check them out, we've got them linked down below. Pound of Love comes in a lot of different colors. It's a really soft acrylic and it does make for a beautiful baby blanket. We hope you enjoyed making this project along with us and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty and have an awesome week. Bye everybody. Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.